normally celebrate with the waving of palm branches and children entering and processing into the sanctuary. But this day is very different for us. And I felt it was important for us to start out this worship service on Palm Sunday, knowing that many hearts are broken, knowing the great anxiety and fear that we all have, that we spend a, a moment in silence, uh, remembering those who have lost their lives this week, and for those who put themselves in harm's way to save lives, I'd like us to all spend a moment in silent prayer for them and for us all. Let us pray. and prayers let us hold one another close and embrace each other in our prayers for one another and for all the world I'd like to uh, start out on a different note now by remembering our birthdays in April Calvary has a tradition of singing happy birthday for all those uh, who have a birthday in this month of April you can stand up if your birthday is in April you can also make a comment on Facebook at this time.
today from uh, Matthew 21, 1 to 11. I'll be reading from Eugene Peterson's The Message. When they neared Jerusalem, having arrived at Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples with these instructions. Go over to the village across from you. You will find a donkey tethered there, her colt with her. Untie her and bring them to me. And if anyone asks what you are doing, say, the master needs them. He will send them with you. This is the full story of what was sketched earlier by the prophet. Tell Zion's blood. Look, your king has his way poised and ready and mounted on a donkey on a colt, full of a pack animal. The disciples went and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They led the donkey and the colt out and laid some of the clothes on them. And Jesus mounted. Nearly all the people in the crowd threw their garments down on the road, giving him a royal welcome. Others cut branches from the trees and threw down as they welcomed, as a welcome mat. Crowds went ahead and crowds followed him, and they were all calling out, Hosanna, Hosanna to David's son. Blessed is he who comes in the new God's name. Hosanna in the highest. As he made his entrance into Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken. Unnerved, people were asking, what's going on here? Who is this? And the parade crowd answered, this is the prophet, Jesus, the one from Nazareth at Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. And remember, stay safe. Thanks, Greg. I'd like to read a poem from Wayne Bathers uh, for our prayer. Let's join together in prayer. Oh, for a faith that will not shrink, though pressed by every foe, that will not tremble on the brink of an earthly woe, that will not murmur or complain beneath the chastening rod, but in the hour of grief or pain will lean upon its God. A faith that shines more bright and clear when tempests rage without, that when in danger knows no fear, in darkness feels no doubt. Lord, give us a faith such as this, and then whatever may come, we'll taste even now the hallowed bliss of an eternal home. Amen.
Thanks so much, Lori. That is so true. It is a time where we want Jesus to walk with us. Well, how are we doing? My thoughts and prayers are with you all. And may the grace and peace and love of God be with you and in you and all around you. Well, the 2.2 trillion stimulus package the government approved reminded me of another unprecedented plan that was enacted 73 years ago called the Marshall Plan. At the conclusion of World War II, where we humans killed some 60 million of our own kind, a figure still unimaginable to me. In a June 5, 1947 speech to the graduating class at Harvard University, Secretary of State George Marshall issued a call for a comprehensive program to rebuild Europe. The Marshall Plan has been recognized as a great humanitarian effort. Secretary of State Marshall became the only general ever to receive a Nobel Prize for peace. We are now witnessing a great humanitarian effort to save lives. This effort is making an impact on our world in ways we may not realize. After a century that witnessed humans killing some 100 million from war and violence and hatred, which did untold damage to our collective spirit. Now during this time, we are witnessing with so many selfless acts of kindness all over the world, the very purification and unification of our collective consciousness. Now this is a real thing, it's sometimes called cosmic consciousness or Christ consciousness. It is the ultimate reality that the world shares one unified consciousness. We are all one in God. Jesus taught this in Matthew 25 and elsewhere. What you do to the least of these, you do to me, Jesus said. When Governor Andrew Cuomo asked for people to come and help New York hospitals on TV, 20,000 healthcare professionals signed up to help in two days. This week, dozens of New York firefighters went to Elmhurst Hospital in Queens during a shift change. And they stood on the street on their fire trucks applauding healthcare workers. And this brought a number of those workers to tears as they saw the fire trucks and the firemen cheering them on. When I saw the military hospital ships going to LA and New York, it reminded me of Isaiah's prophecy, they will beat their swords into plowshares. Folks, this will happen sometime in our future, perhaps sooner rather than later. And I can't emphasize overemphasize the importance of what we are seeing in the great heroic acts of selfish compassion being displayed every single day all over the world. This kind of selflessness is generating a powerful purification and unification of our collective spirit. One of the things Jesus taught us is that we are all the entire world connected and united in a way that few realize. This unity consciousness or Christ consciousness or the Latin is unio mystica is that we were meant to live together in harmony with love and peace towards all. And that includes the entire world. We saw Jesus constantly reaching out to those outside his group and offering the love of God to the whole world. 
And when I see on TV doctors being interviewed who are risking their lives to save others, I see doctors of all different kinds, of all different types of skin, male and female. This is a beautiful thing to see. Compassion has no boundaries, no ethnic identity. It is universal. It is God. Everything that exists first starts out as a thought. So our thoughts are very important, more than we realize. Keep our prayers positive, healing prayers for safety and health and wholeness for the entire world. We can, through this prayer, help create a future of peace and harmony future of healing and wholeness. The greatest force in this world is not a virus, it is love, it is God. As St. Paul writes in Romans 8, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing except our own fearful, selfish ego. Now is not the time to be paralyzed by fear, but to be moved into action with love. Jesus came preaching metanoia, change your mind. Fear will bring us only more violence and suffering. Love will bring us healing and peace. A peace that transcends all understanding. Fear actually prevents us from seeing our true self which is one with all others. Our true self is a state of consciousness that carries with it a peace that transcends all. It enables us to actually experience being one with all the world. It is a transcendent consciousness that more and more people are waking up to. And this oneness with all enables us to see that we're not separate individuals with an independent existence, but rather we are part of a great unified consciousness that includes everything. And we realize with this spiritual awareness that what we do to others, we do to ourselves. Love your neighbor as yourself. Eventually, the world will begin to have a great spiritual awakening to this truth that we are all interwoven in a spiritual tapestry that unites us together in the loving embrace of God. May we all awaken to this great truth and live out the call to be one in Christ.
Thank you, Lori. I'd like to thank Val and Rick and Diana and Lori for making this service possible. Um, if the Spirit leads, please uh, like us and share us on Facebook and leave comments. And we uh, welcome you to join us in a Zoom meeting this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. And the uh, link for that is available to you uh, through an email we will send out. And our thoughts and prayers continue to be with you and with all those in need. May the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore.